what's up users this is John at muse for you here to help you build awesome websites without code and in this video tutorial I will be showing you how to create a blurry to non blurry opacity effect uh, with this effect you can have an image change from blurry to non blurry as the user scrolls you can also use any other effects you'd like to create a really interesting transition between images as the user scrolls I have an example here so I'm gonna scroll down and we can see that that first image is blurry and the backdrop is in focus. And as we scroll, that image in the front becomes in focus and the backdrop becomes blurry. Very nice. So in this video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do this. Uh, we'll be using uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, to add the effects to the, to the images. And we'll be using Adobe Muse to add the scroll effects and create the website. So let's begin. So the first thing I want to do is get the images. Uh, so I'm going to go to my finder window. So I'll open this image here. And this image here is a hand with an iPhone. So we want to cut out uh, this image here. And then uh, I used this backdrop for that first uh, example, but we can select any backdrop we'd like. So I'll actually go to uh, unsplash.com, which is where I get most of my images. Uh, they're really high quality and they look really nice. So I'm just going to scroll through here. Uh, and find an image that I like. Very good, so I'll select this image here, so I'll click on it. Then I'll click on download, then I'll right click, save image as, and I'll save it as image-8. Yeah, because I just have a few images there that have different numbers, so I'll name this image-8. Very good, so now I'll go back to my finder here, and I have this image here, which I'll be using as the backdrop, and then I have this image of the hand and the iPhone. So the next thing I'm going to do is open this image in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to right click, open with Adobe Photoshop. And very good. And the first thing I want to do is resize this image because it's fairly large. Um, images from Unsplashed, uh, they come really large, so we want to resize it. So I'm going to go to image, image size. And the resolution, I'm going to set it to 300 so we retain a really high quality image. And then for the width, I'm going to say 1160 because uh, that's about the uh, the default width of an Adobe Muse website and by setting it to 1160 we ensure that the image uh, looks good on you know all browsers or on big browsers that way we don't have a, an image scaling from uh, small to big and losing quality uh, you know if someone has a 27 inch iMac and they make their browser really really big uh, this image on the website will still look uh, really good at 1160 width very good so I'll click OK and there our image is smaller Perfect. Now the next thing I want to do is copy this image over into another artboard. So I want to go to File, New, and I'm going to say 1160 by 500. That way we don't have like this really large image in our Adobe Muse website. We can have an image that's about 500 pixels in height, and the width is 1160 like we just set the image to. And then for the resolution, I'm going to say 300, and I'll click OK. And now I'm going to go back to image 8. I'm going to hit Command A to select the entire image or Control A if you're on Windows. And then I'll hit Command C to copy or Control C if you're on yeah, or Control C if you're on Windows. And then I'll go back to this uh, artboard here and I'll hit Command V to paste. And now we can drag the image up a little bit and we can just pick the part of the image that we like. So right here, this is good. Um, so we do have part of the image at the kind of the top and the bottom cut off, but that's okay because again, I don't want a really tall image. Uh, for my website. I just want the user to see kind of this nice image um, as they scroll. I wouldn't want it to cover too much of the website. So uh, 500, 500 pixels I find works really well uh, when designing my website. You could even go smaller if you'd like. Uh, but here we have it. So we're going to work with this. And now the next thing I want to do is open up uh, this other image with the hand um, and the iPhone. So I'm going to right click, open with Adobe Photoshop. And now I want to cut out the arm here with the hand and the iPhone. Uh, so I'm going to go to my brush tool here. Uh, it's over here to the left. And we have the quick selection tool, or we can use the magic wand tool. So I'm going to select the quick selection tool. And this tool is really useful. So I'm going to start here at the bottom of the arm and click, hold, and drag. And actually, before I do that, um, I want to resize the image again because it's really, really large. So I'm going to go to image, image size. And again, I'm going to set the resolution to 300, and I'm going to set the image width to 1160. Very good, and I'll hit Command Plus to zoom in again. 
and that way we just have a, a smaller image there very good and we're working with that 1160 width so again I'm gonna go to my quick selection tool click click and hold down to select quick selection and I'm gonna click hold and drag and select that entire arm we see it selected the hand there and then I'm just gonna move up to the phone and we've selected the phone and I want to select that circle button there so we we get the the uh, iPhone button there and it doesn't get cropped out now I could even cut out this little piece here between the thumb and the phone so to do that I go up here where we have the plus selected and we can select the minus and so I'll select that and then I'll just click in between the thumb and the phone very good so it cut out that little piece there so we don't see it uh, when we paste it into the other image very good so that's it we've selected the hand and um, yeah kind of the arm the hand and the phone and out of this image here and so now what I want to do is hit command C to copy or control C if you're on Windows and I'm going to go back to that image where we pasted it in and created that uh, 1160 by 500 uh, artboard so now I'll hit command V to paste and we have that phone in there perfect so now I'll just kind of center that in the middle and it looks good so we have that hand with the phone and we have that back backdrop so I'll just kind of move it around there maybe a little bit higher yeah it looks good maybe like right there perfect okay good so now I have the backdrop and the phone there with the hand so now the next thing I want to do is make the backdrop blurry and the phone in focus and then I'll do the phone uh, in the hand in focus and um, me, and then I'll do the phone blurry and the backdrop in focus so to make the backdrop blurry I just select the backdrop layer here in Photoshop then I'll go to filter and I'll select blur and I'll select Gaussian blur and right now it's at 10 the radius is at 10 for the blur and that's pretty good we can see it blurred out the background and I'll click OK and now the next thing I want to do is I want to add a glow to this uh, hand and iPhone because we can see some of the edges aren't as smooth so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to layer 2 where the hand and phone are I'm going to right click click on blending options and then I'm going to click on outer glow and here we can set kind of the outer glow uh, I set this before I set the opacity to 60 percent and uh, I set the size to 38 pixels I find that's a nice glow effect so I'll click OK and you can you know mess around with this you can set the opacity higher um, and the size uh, you know make it really glow uh, but I like the opacity at 60 and let me undo that go back to outer glow and I'll set the size at 60 and the excuse me the opacity at 60 and the size to 38 very good so that looks good there and now what I want to do is save this image so I'll go to file uh, export save for web and I'll click on save and then I'll save it as image uh, or I'll do final image 3 because I already have uh, an, a name for image one, final image one and final image two. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, undo. I'm gonna go to edit, step backwards, edit, step backward. So what we see now is that the backdrop is not blurry anymore. And what I wanna do is add the glow effect again to the phone. So I'm gonna right click, right click go to blending options. And then uh, the settings are already the same. So I'll just click okay. And we have that outer, outer glow there on the phone. And now we're going to go to filter, go to blur, and select Gaussian blur. And now the phone is blurred out. And we have it uh, blurred out at the radius of 10, which is the same we did for the backdrop. And I'll click OK. So that's it for that. And now I'll just go to file, uh, export, save for web, save it as JPEG, and I'll click save. And then I'll save it as final image 4. Very good. You can name it anything you'd like, whatever works for your design project. And I'll go to Adobe Muse. Um, and this is the phone part where we actually add the scroll effect, the opacity scroll effect. So now I'll go to my Adobe Muse website. So I'll select the rectangle tool over here and I'll create a rectangle like so. And then I'll make this rectangle 100% width by selecting the 100% width tool right over here. And now I have this 100% width rectangle. So now I'll fill this rectangle with the first image. So I'll go to add image and I'll select final image four because I want the phone blurry first and the backdrop in focus and then I want the backdrop to become blurry and the phone to come in focus. So there we filled the image so now I'm going to go back to fill and I'm, I'm going to say scale to fill and then center it in the middle. Very nice. 
So there we go, we have this nice image there. And the height is about 386. The height is almost 400, uh, which is good. We can set it to 400. And then again, we'll set it to 100% width. Very good, so that looks good there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this rectangle. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit there by hitting Command minus. And now we'll fill this rectangle with the other image. So I'll go to fill where it says image. I'll click on the image and I'll select image three. Very good, so now I have the blurry image and the non-blurry image. So like the blurry iPhone and the non-blurry iPhone. So now the only image we need to add the opacity scroll effect to is this top image. We don't need to worry about the bottom image because what's gonna happen is that this image on top is gonna go from being not visible to being visible. And the way we do that is we select this top image, we go to scroll effects, and the first scroll effect is motion and the second one is opacity. Uh, we want the opacity scroll effect, so we select the second button here. Then we click opacity, and here we get three different uh, key positions. We get uh, fade position one, we get uh, the key position, which is this middle one, and we get the fade position two. So fade position one, you don't really need to worry about uh, because we're gonna set it to zero, and we're gonna set the, se the key position here, which is the second button here. We're also gonna set this to zero. So what's gonna happen is that between the key position and fade position two, we're gonna have it go to 100. So between this key position and this fade position here, that's where the image is gonna fade in from 0% to 100%. So here's where we'll play uh, with these two position, key positions. We'll play with this key position and the fade position two. And the more distance that's between uh, these two is how slower or how quickly the image is gonna fade in and have that kind of transition effect. So for this key position here, I actually wanna bring it a little bit higher, so I'm gonna say 300. And I like doing it manually here because when you move it, we can see that it moves all the other key positions. So I'm just gonna set the key position to 300. Uh, the first key position I'm gonna to set to zero. And then uh, this fade position, I'm just gonna play with it and see what works best for this transition. So I'm gonna put it like around here and I'm gonna to go to File, Preview Page in Browser, and I'm gonna scroll, and very good. So we actually need more scroll space so we can see the effect, so I'm gonna bring this down here. Very good, and I'm gonna to go to File, Preview Page in Browser, and I'm gonna scroll, scroll, and we can see that that effect works really nice. I actually really like the way it transitions and the way it scrolls there. So we do that, so we can see the phone is blurry, then the backdrop becomes blurry and the phone comes into focus. Very good, so that's it for the effect. And again, you can play uh, with the key position. So if I bring this up higher here, uh, and I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, and I scroll up, we can see it's a quicker transition between when the image comes into uh, focus. Very good, so I like it when there's a little more uh, time between the transition to have like a nice slow transition so you really get the effect of that phone coming into focus from being out of focus. So there we go, and there it goes. And the backdrop becomes out of focus and the phone becomes in focus. Yeah, the backdrop becomes blurry and the phone becomes uh, in focus. Very good, so that's pretty much it for this effect. Again, I do this to help you build awesome, awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also, there's other links to, there's links to other resources and more resources below if you click on show more. And uh, you can visit museforyoushop.com. You can also subscribe to the Muse for You subscription and get access to all the widgets uh, in the Muse for You shop. So again, thanks for watching. And I, I do this to help you build awesome, awesome websites without code. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial.